JJ Jinx! Truck Stop Knives! Yeah. JJ Jinx! Truck Stop Knives! Coming at you with another Bud K unboxing. It's been a long time since I've done one of these because I am buying a house. And uh, the underwriting went really well, the inspection, the uh, uh, appraisal, like all that stuff is, is green lit and like, I'm getting it. I'm going to be moving in about a month and I'm really excited because I'm going to have a really giant awesome attic. Um, and also like an 800 square foot creepy ass basement. And like, I, I really like that because uh, growing up in Florida... We didn't really have those. The water table was too high for basements, and the hurricanes made attics kind of not a thing. So now I'm going to have both of those. Uh, so I've been saving up a lot of money, trying not to spend, and uh, I guess I decided I'm going to temporarily lift my moratorium on spending and celebrate by giving the, uh, the old Bud K scratch and dent sale a shot. So... I got it. <laughs> oh, this is a giant box. Oh, my God. It's, it's a big box. So, I went and picked up a package of scratch and dent swords. There should be four of them. And a set of scratch and dent folding knives. I don't know how many are in that. I think like five or six. And to top it all off, I decided to get one of the regular old mystery boxes because it's been a while and maybe I'll get some newer shit. Um, so a word about Bud K's scratch and dent thing. Uh, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's items that have some kind of a flaw, usually cosmetic, a scuff mark, or perhaps um, an engraving that didn't go well. And then uh, they put them into these scratch and dent boxes at very severe discounts off of the ticket price, usually. Um, over the past year or so, the people who unbox these things have been encountering more and more often actual, like, un undamaged merchandise. And I think it's just stuff that Bud K wanted to get rid of, which is kind of deceptive and shitty of them because that's not what you're paying for. And, um, and one of them that keeps popping up here and there is this Roman style gladiator sword which I wouldn't mind having, but that's, it's not scratch and dent. If it's, you know, still in the packaging, brand new, it doesn't look like it's damaged beyond how they already make it. But anyway, I'm just going to jump right into this box. And to open it, I'm going to use my Kershaw Cryo Black Wash. Uh, I've been carrying this knife for not, 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 so, not really a year. It's, I, I would say, actually probably been something like nine months and I'm pretty happy with it um, it's very heavy but uh, there's a lot of really cool little design features in this knife and I don't want to get into it too much because this video is not about this knife so this, I'm impressed at how big this box is I'm just gonna go off camera for a second and It's open. Got the new catalog, which um, I actually think I already have this one. You got the guy about to shoot you with a crossbow, little tiny, little tiny crossbow too. Um, anyway, yeah, I won't go into the catalog. I did a bunch of those videos already. Got a couple of these inserts for uh, clothing of some kind and some kind of Native American wolf howling at the moon thing. Yeah. I kind of wonder, what are these companies that put these into the uh, magazine? How much do they get? Does Bud K get a commission on it? I don't know. Got the order form. <sighs> Sorry about that. We were just rudely interrupted by my mortgage company. I'm on airplane mode now, so that shouldn't happen again. Yeah, that's the, one of the uh, disadvantages of using your phone as your camera. Is this thing recording? Yes, it is. Okay, 
So, I just opened the box, took out the catalog and everything. Here's the paper. Stay there, I guess. Okay, now, when people get these scratch and dent things, there's a couple of name brands that um, people get excited for when they see it. One of them is Shinwa, and the other one is, is that Hanshu or Hansu? One of those two. Because those are, um, tend to be the higher ticket items. Uh, some of those swords can go for as much as like a couple hundred bucks retail, you know, basically the price that Bud K sets. Um, but anyway, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind having one of those. So first thing I found, oh, okay, is this uh, Fantasy Sword with Sheath. Fantasy Sword with Sheath. A clockwork apparatica? Huh. So I guess this is kind of a steampunk kind of deal thing. Now the box looks like it's in good shape and there is tape on it so I got a feeling that this is actually not a scratch and dent item. It could be something they just wanted to get rid of. And there's all the text for you. It reads, Clockwork Apparatica Fantasy Sword. The Clockwork Apparatica Steampunk Sword is a distinctive masterwork of bladed art. The blade is finely etched with intricate gears, sprockets, coils, and other aesthetic staples of steampunk. And it puts this in quotation marks. Grismology? Gizmology. Jismology? I'm going to say it's jismology. Intertwined with an elegant swirling vine motif brilliant gold-colored ornamentation and elliptical fantasy cutouts studded with gleaming brass accents beautifully offset the mellow satin blade finish the handsome brown leather lap wrapped leather wrapped handle provides a no-slip grip housed in the included nylon belt sheath the clockwork apparatica is easy to transport Wicked satin finished stainless steel blade includes tough nylon belt sheath overall length 28 inches Okay, let's see what's inside Probably a steampunk sword And it's got gears all over it, so you know it's legit Yeah, it, this is brand spanking new. Bud K, god damn it. I want to like Bud K. I don't know why I keep buying shit from him. <sighs> See, like, I don't mind having this because I don't have one, but it's just... <sighs> I'd rather have a higher dollar item. And I'm not into steampunk stuff, so... Anyway, here it is. This is a... A lot cooler than the other steampunk sword I got. And, uh, well, first impressions. It is intricately ornamented. Uh, it's got these circular things in it. The blade has actually got an edge on it. Not a very sharp edge, but usually these fantasy swords are like for display purposes only and they don't have edges, but this one does. And that's a kind of a neat brushed brass looking thing. Um, and then the end here with, yeah, that's, that's plastic. That's not leather, come on. And it looks like electrical tape underneath or something. Uh, well, it's kind of cool, I guess, but... I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Let's see what's in the next box. It's cardboard. Oh, come on. That's long. It's a long cardboard box. And inside. Piece of paper. 
congratulations on your purchase of this premium cutlery product. All right. Uh, it's got instructions for maintenance and sharpening. Bear with me here. Uh, these things are huge. All right. Well, we got a bag. And it feels like it's a Japanese style wakizashi, probably. Yeah. Oh. And it's got a chain. Okay. Let me unfurl the rest of it. So it's got this uh, black nylon wrapping with some bumpy red stuff underneath. Oh my. <laughs> Where do you see this? It's, it's got kind of a swastika looking hilt. Or there's, there's a technical word for what these are. I forgot. I don't My terminology is not current. Oh, it's got like a black blade. Oh, all right. Well, what to say about this one. Made in China. And it's Bud K branded, so it's not a chinois or one of those. Um, they did put an edge on it, but I'm not seeing any defects. Unless this chain is supposed to be hooked up to something, but... I don't know. So it's a big black sword. A big ass black sword. There's nothing wrong with this. It's <laughs> Bud K, you're slipping. I wanted scratch and dent. Not crap you had on your shelf. Now the uh, scabbard has a strange kind of raised, bumpy, shiny appearance to it. It kind of looks like water in a way. Oh, okay. Put you over here. Sword sock out of it too. Oh, these styrofoam U-shaped things are making a mess. Okay, well, uh, not too happy so far, but I'm not entirely disappointed. I'm just kind of mad that it's not scratching that shit. Let's go to the next one. Oh wow. Avalanche, avalanche of knives and shit. Well, this one comes in a giant ornate box. So it's like a kind of a burgundy and red color. The bottom has this interesting pattern. So the box isn't too bad. Now, this box has latches on it. You can see, like, these things. And they were opened. So, there's a chance this might be a legitimate scratch and dent thing. I don't know. Ooh. It's got a shiny lacquered scabbard. Whoa. Wow. It's a shinwa. This is... dirty <laughs> but the really cool thing about it and it's gonna be hard to show just because it's like kind of dark is that the steel is Damascus style and that's really cool look at that I like Damascus I think what was wrong with this one is that they must have dropped it in the dirt or something <laughs> yeah I like that patterning. And it's like black and red. That's interesting. Cool. My very first chinois. Yeah, I like that folded steel look, but... I think I would like it better if it wasn't black and red. I'd prefer, like, the regular, you know, steel color. 
Yeah, not bad. I like this. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, though. But, okay. I'm a little happier. I'm a little happier. Which way does this go? Cool. And I like the box it came in. <laughs> Wonder if I could repurpose it for something like... Oh, wow. It's like gold on the inside, too. Check that out. It's like a coffin for a snake. All right. Next. Oh, God. Why? <laughs> Blue Fury. Three-piece sword and thrower set. And here's an image of what's in there. Yeah, I don't think this is damaged. <laughs> I think this is, yeah, it's taped, sh it's glued shut, so. Well, let's open it up and have a look. And it's got tape on the end. Wow, this, this thing immediately feels cheap. So, it's got nylon mesh scabbard, a couple of little throwing knives, good for killing Florida squirrels. They are blue and not sharp, but that's fine. Now, I do detect a small cosmetic defect in this one. There's a little bit of surface that's kind of scraped off, but I mean, I actually want this stuff to be damaged. It's kind of funny. <laughs> and uh, these get their own little pocket on the side. And now for the big one. Oh, it's light. And it's got holes in it and slots. And it comes to a, like a spear point. Wow, look at the grind on this thing. They didn't even try. It's like going off in an off angle like that. <laughs> the, other, the other side's better, but I don't know. Maybe that could be the defect. Because otherwise this thing just kind of looks okay, I guess. It's a blue sword. Thanks, bud, okay? Wow. All right. I believe that concludes the uh, Scratch and Dent Swords set. I don't think any of them were scratched, nor were they dented. Maybe that blue one. But for 10 bucks a piece, eh, I think the Steampunk one was probably worth less than that, in my opinion. And the blue thing, way less. But this one... And the Hanshu, or Shinwa, rather. This is the, the Nazi sword. <laughs> uh, maybe they were worth more. Definitely the one with the Damascus steel. There's a lot of work that goes into making that. But it had kind of a random looking pattern to it, so it's not like it was a special kind of folding. Anyway. The pocket knives. Holy crap, there's a lot of these. <laughs> wow. One, two... How many of these are there? There's a lot. Jeez. I got a Southwest Red Red Pocket Knife. And again, these are supposed to be scratch and dent, but these all look brand new to me. A timber Wolf. Another Timber Wolf. Two more Tinder Wolves. Boxes are slightly different sizes, so hopefully they're not four of the same thing. Uh, a Bushmaster. Ah, a Black Legion, my favorite. It's, uh, no name brand. A mysterious white box. It's 
kind of beat up. Name brand. Uh, Tomahawk. And a mystery black box. Jeez, there's a lot of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. A full dozen. Whew, where do I even begin? I'll begin with the ones that actually have the picture of the knives on it. So this is the Bushmaster Green Venom pocket knife. The clip assisted opening and some dimensions handcrafted in China. So Bushmaster is apparently a subsidiary of subsidiary of United Cutlery. Uh, this thing is still in the packet, not scratched nor dented. So it's got these ugly kind of neon green stripes to it. Kind of an interesting pattern. And uh, there's no flipper, but it's got thumb studs. Liner lock and a low ride pocket clip. Uh, tip down only carry. Opening mechanism is not too bad. That was pretty smooth. It's riding on, maybe you can see in there, it's riding on these um, Teflon spacers. Which isn't great, but it's better than nothing. Teflon's pretty slippery. And the liner lock goes right to where it needs to be. So, quality-wise, I mean, it's not bad, actually. I'm, I'm not too disappointed. It's got a pretty generous sharpening choil. The spacers are kind of shiny metallic posts. It's almost too light. Like, all the weight is in the blade. <laughs> the Bushmaster Green Venom pocket knife. Okay, next. I think I want to open this mystery box. BKMB03. Holy crap. What am I looking at here? It's got, is that an eagle or a hawk? And it's some kind of a very narrow Victorinox-ish knife with a corkscrew screwdriver. Uh, looks like a bottle opener, a can opener, and a main can opener, and a main blade. Stainless China. Very dull tip on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I don't recognize it from Bud Case catalog. That's interesting. I wonder if it's a promotional item. Now, these two knives are pretty much the same. They're just different colors. So this says assisted opening rescue knife. It's like it's police themed or something. And this one is the firefighter assisted opening knife. So we got blue for the cops and red for the firefighters. Let's have a look see. All right. First impressions. I don't really like the clip very much. It's like very high riding. Uh, the blade has a very strange looking bunch of holes in it. And the scale here. Is a FD for fire department, and you got your seatbelt cutter and glass breaker, so it is tactical. And it's got serrations on the blade, and it's painted black, and it's made in China. Uh, the assisted opening was pretty smooth, and it looks like it's a true spring. It's not the slot cut out onto into the liner. It's also uh, equipped with Teflon spacers but it does have a flipper, unlike the other one. And the liner goes to a good spot, so it's only a little bit garbage. I don't think I would carry a knife like this with me. But also, I'm not a firefighter. It would be appropriating if I were to carry that right. 
Um, I won't bother looking at the blue one because it's the same knife. Okay, I'm kind of curious about this black mystery box. Let's see what is in this one. There's a little, uh, little knife in there. It says China on the plastic bag. It is very shiny. So it appears to be polished stainless steel. It's got a low ride pocket clip. Blade's pretty center. I don't know anything about this knife. There's no information on the box. It's not assisted opening. It is a liner lock. I don't like it really. It's, it's kind of small, but it's shiny. I'll give it that. Well, it's got a pretty decent detent on it. A hole for your shoestring. Okay. Okay, 2962. Hmm. Alright, a shiny knife and a shiny box to go with it. Okay, let's dive into these Timberwolves. Um, I'm just going to glance at the item numbers real quick to make sure I don't... If they're all going to be the same thing so far... Nope, these are all different numbers. So these are all different knives, that's good. <clears throat> However, I got a feeling there is a set of Timberwolf knives that I got in another box a while ago where they were all the same knives, just different colors. Uh, the handles were like, it was like blue, black, and orange. So I hope I don't get more of that. It's another shiny knife, what the hell? Well, this one's a little different, though. The, the handle shape is a little different. You don't have the lanyard hole. Uh, and it's got... Uh, it's, it's a liner lock. Or not a liner lock, a frame lock, rather. And it's got a flipper handle, so it's... Oh, wow. I wouldn't call that very much assistance <laughs> for the opening, but maybe it just needs a little bit of grease or something. So, yeah, it is another shiny knife... That is assisted opening from Timberwolf. Interesting. I'm, I'm at least I'm uh, getting different stuff for a change, and I'm kind of surprised by some of it. Oh wow. Okay, it's the same knife, but it's like it's got that uh, titanium rainbow look to it. Uh, no, it is not the same knife. It does not have a flipper. This is strange. No flipper handle. So if I, yeah, these are, these are, these are different. Hmm. It kind of reminds me of the one that came in the black box. Let's see how these compare. Oh, they're, they're different. You can tell by the pivot screws and the screws holding the, uh, the stop pin. Actually, this stop pin is riveted in. They're not riveted, but it's got those recessed posts, probably. Okay, well, let's see what the blade looks like. Yes, now that... This is something you can carry at the Pride Parades. A lot of shiny knives so far. So that'll... that'll I'll call that one the, my Pride Knife. I don't really keep the boxes... Okay, uh, let's just keep going with the Timberwolves, I guess. Here's the next one. None of these are scratch or dented. These are just stuff they wanted to get rid of, I guess. Ooh, this one's kind of neat. It's got a leather um, lanyard. And it looks like a black stained wood. A tip up placement for the pocket clip for a change. And it's got this swoosh chrome chromed out look to it. I kinda like it. This looks like something that a biker would carry. And let's oh that was a bit weak. But it actuated. Alright. Got I'm gonna save the last timber wolf. And next I'll open this tomahawk knife. It's got a warning label on it. This product may contain chemicals known 
to the state of California to cause cancer, birth defects, or other reproductive harm. What in the hell could this knife possibly have in it that it triggered Prop 65? Oh my goodness, it's... That's, is that lightning? This is the knife used by one of the three storms. Big trouble in Little China. Yeah, it's like a it's skyscape knife. <laughs> but it's pretty similar in shape to one of these other ones. No, not really. I guess... Yeah, okay. Well, that's unique. It's like a lightning storm sunset. Interesting. <laughs> this is fun. I'm glad I got this. Next, I will open the Southwest Red Pocket Knife. Oh, yeah. So this knife, it's another cultural appropriation knife. It's just, uh, doesn't open very well. It's just kind of bigger and shittier. <laughs> it's really cheap and plasticky. Uh, it's got that sort of feather look to the blade. And uh, this, like, southwest Aztec-looking patterning to it. And a little bit of be some beads so that you can buy Manhattan. And the liner barely moves. I think it's just a really weak opening. No? It, it barely moves. Okay, well. That's cheap as hell. The Southwest Red Pocket Knife, everybody. And it might give you cancer. Alright. Let's go to the net last Timberwolf. This is a really light Custom Steel series. Oh. Okay, it's, it is a small little, little knife here. Uh, it's got a multi-layered wood for the scales. And a uh, little... Oh, that's interesting. So the little wolf head is actually cut out from the bolster. Hmm. And it's uh, just your traditional liner lock. It's a, kind of a neat little knife. Let's see how it opens. Oh, that was kind of rough. It's got Teflon spacers, but I can... I don't know if you can hear that. It's, it's a little gritty. But it's got these uh, ergonomic finger grooves. But it's so small. This is, this is for, like, a four-year-old. Okay. Uh, I saved the best for last. Black Legion. The best. I'm really excited about this. Let's see what it looks like. Oh. Yeah, okay. I've seen these on their uh, website and in the catalogs. So, <clears throat> this is one of the Primordial series, where they basically have the same knife, but just different colors. Uh, and each one is a Primordial something or other. Like, brown would be for Earth. Blue might be for Water. Orange might be for fire. Oh my god, that was weak. So it's assisted open-ish. <laughs> and it's bigger than I thought it would be. So now I have to collect them all, right? And then when you get a group together, and you each have one of these, and you open them at the same time, you summon a mall ninja version of Captain Planet. Look at that sharpening twill. That thing is huge. I don't know if it's meant for fingers. Yeah, that's, I don't like that. <laughs> Finger gets really close to the edge there. Um, it also feels a lot crappier than I thought it would. Well, I'm glad I got one of these because I've been wanting to check them out. Because if, if they are nice and nice enough to collect, there are a lot of them. There's like six of them, I think. Something like that. But I don't think I'll be doing that. Okay. And that concludes the scratch and dent pocket knives, which I don't think any of them had any 
sort of defects to them, so let's move on. Oh. Is there nothing else in here? Oh, there is more. There's more. Holy crap. What did I order? I must have ordered the mystery pocket knife set. Well, okay. Let's just dive right into it then. We've got a big timber wolf and a ridge runner in a like paper box. I haven't seen that before. It's really light. No idea what that is. Oh yeah, we got another one of these uh, Marine Corps knives. Reviewed this when uh, I was down with the guys in Florida. Got G10 scales, black wash finish. This one actually opened a lot better than the one in Florida did. Oh, that blade centering is pretty bad. It just collided with the liner. So when you, you hear that, that's not good. So that means the blade is just too far in one direction, and as it closes, it, it scrapes by the liner. This is a common flaw. And cheap knives. It can be fixed by tightening the pivot, but then it might affect the opening. Maybe that's why it opened so well, because it's loose. There's a little bit of blade play. Overall, this is just kind of a crappy knife in general. So look at that. Didn't even close all the way that time. Okay. United States Marines, everybody. Well, this is interesting. This is a Krieger stiletto. I don't really care for stilettos very much. They can look nice, but um, I don't know. It's just not my style. All right, I got to do it. So I guess you just... Nope. So there's a button, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> there's a flipper handle. Okay, yeah, this this is this is a really odd looking knife. It's like, yeah, it's not an automatic. An automatic would be we push the button and it flips open, which is illegal in most states. Blade centering is pretty terrible on this one, um, but it's the flipper tab that makes it really odd because when it comes out, it now it's got this little wang sticking out. Yeah, like I said, I'm not too big on stilettos, but. This one's all right. At least it's shiny and, I don't know, <laughs> covered in some kind of, ew, what is that? You seeing this? What the hell am I looking at? That's pitting. Wow, that means that when this metal was um, probably cast or stamped, it was not fully molded. There was, there was a little bit of air. And uh, it resulted in this awful pitting. Finally got something that's scratch and dent, I suppose. And the blade just collided with the liner. <laughs> what a piece of garbage. All right. Uh, I'm going to open up this one. This is another Krieger. Legendary quality blade. Oh, interesting. Check that out. So we have this uh, pearlescent handle-scaled knife with a Damascus look to it. Um, the blade is legit Damascus, I can tell, because you kind of look on the back of the blade and you should see a black line down the middle there, and that's from uh, the way that it's folded. So this is an actual Damascus blade, and it's a lockback. That was a pretty satisfying little snap there. And oh, it looks like there's a little bit of teardrops. Teardrops, uh, raindrop Damascus. Uh, so there's some raindrop patternings in there. I like that a lot. That's really cool. And you can see on the on the edge when they cut the blade down to give it its edge. 
you can see the individual layers of the steel. So, I like Damascus steel, and now I have another one. That's great. See, this is the look I would have preferred on that Shinwa sword. And it's pretty sharp, too. I like this one. This pleases me. Now, the bolsters, you can see the individual lines, too, as they cut it away to give it a little bit of a rounded surface. Um, so, yeah, I think this is all around legit Damascus steel. That's pretty cool. Okay, next, I'm going to open up this very light and cheap boxed Ridge Runner. Quality knives and tools. I don't think so. Established in 1996. And it's wrapped in paper. Oh my. That's why it was so light. It's a Texas mini toothpick. With uh, some etch work on the bolsters. And this one's got a defect on it too. Check out that that pearl square. I guess they're going for a Christmas look. Kind of candy cane stripes and green for a Christmas tree, but this one looks like it's caved in a little bit. So I wonder if this is my scratch and dent set, and the other one was just something else. Oh, wow. It's really dirty in there, too. Uh, I got a little bit of file working in the back, so that's kind of neat. Oh, okay. I'll add this to my collection of mini toothpicks. Alright. I got a little advertisement booklet that came out of one of these. From United Cutlery. Uh, not too interesting. There's an evil looking weapon right there. <laughs> the 1065 high carbon steel, the Colombian field shovel, and some other stuff. I'm not too interested in these things. What's this? Oh. It's another congratulations certificate. Let's open the big timber wolf. Custom steel, steel Series again. Oh, wow. It came with a paper towel. I don't think I've ever opened a knife that came with a paper towel. That's a first. Wow, look at this thing. Holy crap. It's another Damascus steel knife. And the sheath it came with is really wide. Hmm. And it's kind of crappy. But looks like it's made pretty well, actually. I get a lot of garbage sheaths from various companies, and I think this is actually one of the better ones I've seen. Uh, and now the knife itself is just really heavy and thick. It looks like it's cut from some kind of animal horn. And uh, looking on, yeah, check out the spine of that one. Or not the spine, but the the back of the blade you can see all the lines in it so this is a damascus legitimate damascus steel and the bolsters as well with file working i don't really care for file working too much it's just a little bit gaudy and it's got a single big brass thumb stud no clip because well it comes with a sheath let's see what the blade looks like I... wow Even the liners on the inside have file working on them, and the blade has these very random uh, Damascus lines. And I do see a defect in it right there. So this, these are just kind of in random directions, so it's not any certain type of folding. And it looks like there's also a pretty generous chip in the blade, too. Don't know if you can tell from there. <clears throat> it's got a neat little swedge on the top here. So, I think these are the scratch and dent knives. Um, did this one have a... Oh, this is from the other set, wasn't it? Oh, I can't even remember. I didn't notice any defects in this one. 
but at least two I did. Interesting. Oh, wow, that is rough. That does not like to open and close. Okay. Well, let's put it in its sheath, then. Oh, man, that's tight. Ugh. And it barely fits in there. And then you got the Timberwolf symbol on it, too. So that's a neat one. I don't care about the defects. It's not like I'm going to go out and actually use these. So, I think that's all. That concludes this presentation. Kershaw Cryo, you've performed admirably. Thank you. Marine Corps Knife, not so much. Um... Maybe this is damaged and put in the scratch into one, too. I don't know. Now, of all the knives that I got, which one is my favorite? That is a question I always ask myself. Um, hmm. Certainly not this one. Although I kind of like the art on it. It's it's a very, uh, oh, what's the word? Uh, vaporwave kind of look to it with the, the green and the pink and the blue. Hmm. I would say my favorite one. It's a toss-up between this one. I, you know what? I think I might actually have to go with this Timberwolf. It's just it's pretty unique looking. It's animal horn, some kind of some kind of bone. Uh, and even though the blade is messed up, and I think I would like this better if it was a lockback. <coughs> but. <clears throat> I actually kind of like the pattern in this steel, um, but it's got a lot of rough edges on it, though. I mean, if you look at the the bolsters up here, these are like 90 degree angles. They kind of chamfered that a little bit, but um, yeah, interesting, very neat. And of the swords, I guess my favorite one was the Shinwa because it's got that Damascus look to it. And, um, I don't know much about these swords outside of... They're Japanese. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's get this thing back in its sheath. It's got a... Uh, yeah, i got to stretch that leather a little bit. And the leather's kind of supple. It's actually... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this went. So, um, the next time you see a video from me, I'll probably be broadcasting from my creepy-ass basement in my new house. In the meantime, i got a couple other videos that I have to finish editing and uploading. I've got the uh, drive from uh, the northeast all the way down to Florida. I stopped at a bunch of truck stops. I stopped at a... Uh, well... You'll see. I found some interesting places to check out. And then, when I was down in Florida, I went to a flea market. That's where I got China Knife. If you haven't seen my Florida unboxing that I put up a month or so ago, check it out. The China Knife, man. What a find. Anyway, this has been JJ Jinx Truck 